We, we, we interrupt our program with a special bulletin. At the same time, governments have been found into more violence, because at no point can I say, I do want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war, right? You have no freedom of economic choice. You still have to give government your money. You still have to give up your property. You still have to pay your taxes. Because if you did have a freedom of economic choice and how best to spend your own money, how best to allocate your own resources, government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes, right? That's true. That's true. So this is how government is immoral. This organization called government then knows only one way to how to solve problems, a that's single way, and that's through the threat and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality, though, of not of nonviolent solutions that you and I and, and uh, Elvis here already share. Yeah, that sounds really yeah. <laughs> So what do you think of that? So my question is, okay, let's say we do get rid of government. What would be, what would take place of government? All right, great, that's a great question. All right, so what do we, want, we have to look at, what is government objectively? Government is just a monopoly on the services you and I want. Right. Yes. These are monopolies like monopoly on roads, monopoly on law, monopoly on, on the post office, the first class mail. It's illegal and criminal for FedEx, UPS, DHL to deliver pieces of paper. They're only allowed to deliver packages. Uh, or ABC. No one's allowed to compete in the market of uh, liquor. Yeah. Right. So they're just monopolies in which you don't have the economic freedom to cancel or unsubscribe or compete entrepreneurially in order to say, I could provide you a better service that's not going to be abusive or harmful to you, the consumer. Right? So that's all that government is. Absent those monopolies, these are just services. So now you have a market of anyone can compete and provide. Right? Now you have real contracts for these services. Okay. Right? Like, there's no contractual relationship with government. You can't show it to me. But you can show me a real contract with like AT&T, with Netflix, Hulu, car payments. Right? You see the signs? Like, I, I like the terms and agreements and consequences. All right, here's my signature. Right? Mm -hmm. Now that's consensual. Right? The relationship with the government monopolies are not right. That doesn't exist. So yes, yeah, it's forced upon us. From right, first. right. If you, if you're born here. That's all you know. It's right. Like, yeah. That's what we grew up with, and we think that's always always been that way. But there's a history before that. There used to be competition, and government outlawed and made it criminal, and that's what why it exists today. So, do you want to go back to what our founding fathers found, like as a neutral government, or do you want to give a government as all of it? Well, I mean, the founding fathers thought they could constrain the size of government, right? They have their checks and balances. Let's try this today, yeah, right? Yeah, Which yeah. means that it can work. You can't constrain uh, coercive c control, well, right? That, let's bring it back to my point where yeah. people, or humans are, you know, innately aggressive. If one, you give one person power, the other person's like, okay, he has power, I want more power than him. Sure. So that, I think that's how government, you know. Political like, power, right? And that's yeah. why we have to abolish political power, right? There's no political power between you and Netflix. You know, like, I don't like, like a couple of years ago, they tried to very sneakily increase their increase prices. prices. And people like, cancel and subscribe, go to Hulu. They lost so much business, right? Yeah. You have the power as a consumer now, right? Or okay. you can compete and say, you know what, I can provide you a better service. There's no politics. Under government politics, though, there is. And that's what needs to be abolished because now it's a politician, a stranger you've never met, dictating your life, telling what you can and cannot do with your body, what you can and cannot do with your property, right? Mm -hmm. But you can't tell him the same, right? Yeah, yeah okay. And a free, go ahead. As you brought up, like smoking marijuana. Right. Government is not, is not legal because they can't control it. They can't monopolize it. Right. In a sense. They can't monopolize cigarettes. That's why cigarettes, which kill more people than marijuana, is right. legal. And they say like uh, uh, pharmaceutical medicine, right? Approved by the FDA, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's what you have in a free society. In a free society, you have real respect for body ownership, real mm -hmm. respect for private property. Now you can have thousands of awesome free societies based on consent catering to your lifestyle and preferences. So now you can finally have this community that's 420 friendly, an apartment complex that's, you know, you can smoke weed in and one across the street that, that, you, that you can't, right? Mm -hmm. No different than like the rules you have in your room apply only in your room. They don't apply across the river to my room, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's the boundaries of those rules, right? But underneath on the underlying rules everyone shares is this real respect for, for that, right? Consent, right? So if government is abolished, yes. how would society go about to, I guess, you know, make something criminalized. Let's say if someone is murdered, right. how would they be punished for that crime? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, all right, so all these communities will have rules that we could consent to, right? So the rules could be no initiation of force, right? I got it, right? All right, and here's some outlines of uh, murder. When you move into this community, you get consent to the consequences of what happens if you break those rules, right? If you steal from someone, here's the consequences. So it could be different. It could be maybe going to a, a prison, but it could also be uh, a pedal fight. It could be, uh, you know, two may enter, one may leave. It could be, you know what, like the Amish, the only punishment they have for breaking the rules there is a social ostracism, right? So you have a lot of different interesting consequences to the rules for each community, but you have a choice then to choose out of all the thousands of communities which ones 
Do you like that caters to you? So your so community itself is going to decide the punishment. But then my question is, who, who's going to be bringing it, or who's going to be taking, carrying out the punishments? All right, so you, 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 cons you consent to how those punishments uh, are carried out in the contract, because it's all outlined. So like, for example, hey, uh, and most of it's just going to be monetary, right? Hey, um, I, I, I broke one of the rules, and I, here I said that I would give $400 if I broke it. Yeah, I will do it, right? Not a problem. But if I chose not to, mm -hmm. is that where you're going to? Like, what happens if you don't want to? Yeah, what if you right, if the person That's, that's a good question. Out. Yeah, and that's perfectly fine. What happens immediately... Everyone knows that you're not a person who makes contracts, right? You're a person who breaks their contracts. That's like economic suicide because then no one's going to hold their contracts with you. You won't get internet. You won't get water. You won't get uh, utilities. You won't get any services. No one will allow you inside their bakery, inside their restaurant, inside their diner, they, right? Because you're breaking contracts. I can't take that risk with someone who, who does that, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and also in the event that you get in dispute with someone else and you want to resolve that conflict, uh, the arbitration system will say, well, first you need to resolve that first conflict right, before we can offer you arbitration services. So there's all these good beneficial incentives for you to just keep your word, right? Okay, so my question is, another question, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the community itself, there's, there's gonna be someone who say that, there's gonna say, okay, that's wrong or that's right. Mm -hmm. Only a person will come up and say, I, I, I messed up or I'm wrong. So who is that person going to be? Uh, so I mean, the only people who are really involved, if there's like a, a crime that was committed, is this between you and the victim, right? The victim can say, you know what, no harm, no foul. Right. Uh, I mean, it's not going to be like it's going to be like if I, did, I, I if I do a crime. Right. Like I didn't do it. Like, oh, I, you didn't do the it. The guy said he, he, I did do it. Right, right, right. So okay, right. right. So the great thing about so today, for example, the Supreme Court has ruled that the police have no obligation to protect their life, liberty, or property. Uh, Winnie Bago versus Cheney County. Many Supreme Court cases uphold that. So there's no obligation. There's really no incentive to find out, you know, who did what crime. Mm -hmm. In a free society, because like I don't want to have to pay out insurance if someone robbed my client or my consumer, right? Because like now you're insured, you're covered. I will have like cameras and making sure no one's going to rob your property, right? It will help lower your insurance premiums, right? Like if you're a good driver, lower your insurance premiums, right? Yeah. Uh, so like if you want to like like fire insurance, hey, let me install a sprinkler, right? If you want to lower your insurance, right? Because I don't want to have to pay out a hundred thousand dollars in case their house catches on fire, mm -hmm. right? I don't want to have to pay out the same amount of money if you ever get uh, harmed or injured, right? So yeah, there's incentives between these uh, groups to pr mitigate and prevent that and find good objective evidence uh, to come to that. But I think at that point, one group is going, you know, definitely become, you know, king of the mountain, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Where one group is going, it's doing really good. The, the market. Okay. So how would that? Because it sounds like, what, I'm sorry, from what you were saying, yeah, insurance would be, be, a, be a big part of that community. Mm -hmm. So you have insurance companies that are, you know, dominating the market, it's just sort of forming a government itself. Well, the thing is, it's consensual. You can cancel and subscribe anytime. Right, you can't do that with government. Right, so that's, that's a that's, yeah, that's a distinction we have to always remember between that. Right, okay. so you know what? I don't like it. You know, in the contest says I could cancel and subscribe, and they're just like, no, please, please. You know, it's like ATT. Look, we'll give you fifty percent off. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, but, but don't go with them. And you have competitors saying, look, come with us. We'll give you like twenty percent off. Right, mm -hmm. so in a market, uh, the opposite happens. Right, quality goes up, cost goes down. In a government monopoly, its cost goes up and quality. Uh, I mean, quality goes down and qu cost goes up. Right. Uh, so that's that's what you have in an awesome free market because then you can compete now at any time against that big business who's been doing really well. Start a Kickstarter campaign, right? And it's like, okay, I have a better idea. You have a better marketing plan, and you can compete, right? Mm -hmm. um, businesses don't stay around for too I mean, who, no. right? I mean, who who shed a tear for Blockbuster when they closed their last door, right? Yeah, <laughs> no problem with you. <laughs> right. You got to keep up, right? You got to mm -hmm. adapt, right? Entrepreneurship isn't for everyone, but you got to you, you know trying to trying to figure out the market and meet people's demands and their needs and keep evolving, right? Okay. You can't keep idle, otherwise, yeah, the next competitor will come in uh, and and win that market. But how would you go about change? Because government is so intact to our everyday lives. That's very true. Very true. You know, I don't think it's going to be easy to just be like, boom. Demolished. Right. Yeah, it's going to take time. That's very true. Uh, so the most thing we can do right now is uh, pursue uh, to be consistent with their virtues, right? In my yeah. day to life, I don't use violence to solve problems, right? This organization called Government Does, and I've been tricked uh, to support it. So it's withdraw your consent from this organization that does nothing but hurt people, mm -hmm. hurt peaceful people, right? And then live our lives in accordance with their principle. Live, live a virtuous life in that, right? And, be, and so part of the organization I'm with is called Liberate RVA. It's uh, over 100 people here who, who have these virtues, who, have, who, who wants a free society based on consent. Right, so it, by creating a community is a great way to start. Eventually, it grows large enough here in Richmond, and then we can ignore government away. Right, we could withdraw our consent altogether, and then it's abolished. Because in the meantime, we're creating all these other services uh, to replace it. Right. right. So I have one last question. Yeah, please, please. So how does religion play into this whole? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, you can anyone as long as uh, I guess that's like the third question, right? I won't violently force my ideas onto you, right? Yeah. So you can you can believe whatever you want, right? People can have people have different mm -hmm. rituals Definitely. and cultures, and but as long as there's respect for each other's uh, private property and self ownership, right? So you can have your Amish community, right? <laughs> you can have a lot of awesome communities that is rich and diverse, but it still has real respect for each other, right? That's a beautiful answer. <laughs> that's a beautiful answer. I I believe religion is for the person that's following that religion, right? No person should influence. So almost all us' choices by their own religion. Right. So, yeah, that, that's a beautiful answer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Cal. Kai Haroon. Haroon, pleasure, man, pleasure. Yeah. Let me give you a, a flyer then. Um, we do a lot of meetings, we do a lot of gatherings. We have one next week. Uh, check us out, man. Meet, meet some of uh, this other, a lot of other cool people here, man. Yeah, my, uh, my other roommate, he's a liberalist as well. Yeah? yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, who is he? His name is Zach. Zach, okay, okay. I don't yeah. think I've heard him yet. All right. Yeah, I'll bring him to a meeting. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> pleasure, man, pleasure. Yeah, man.